All right, I think it's time we solve some logs, but this time we're going to use some properties here along with it, right? Not just our one-to-one -one property, but also other properties we've learned. So on the left side, I've got log base three and log base three. And on the right side, I only have one log base. I can't just use one-to-one -one property because I don't have one tub one, right? I got to make the left side one log base three. That would be log base three of, and it's going to be multiplication when I condense. So that would be 2x squared plus 10 x. All right. So I did multiply 2x times x plus 5. Distribute that in to get that 2x squared plus 10x. If you were like, whoa, bro, what happened? Pump the brakes. All right. Brakes have been pumped. Time to hit the gas. The mathematical gas, that is. All right. Let's go. Let's cruise. Boom. One-to-one -one property is ready to rock and roll. I've got 2x squared plus 10x equals 5x plus 3. Ah! It's a quadratic with a lead coefficient. How about I go ahead and set everything equal to zero? Set it all equal to zero here. We got 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 equals zero. Holy guacamole. I have to factor with the lead coefficient along with logs. Are you insane? Yes, I am. Insanely awesome. Okay. So let's do it. Some of you know this as rainbow method. I would multiply to negative 6. I want to add to 5. That's going to be positive 6 and negative 1 when I do that. Now we're going to break it apart. So I've got 2x squared plus 6x minus 1x minus 3. Now, if you're looking at this, you're like, bro, I've never factored that way. I'm a guess and check, man. That's cool. You can guess and check, okay? I'm just showing you rainbow method because I know a lot of people that do it, all right? It's how people like to solve these types of problems, okay? So now I'm going to go GCF, okay? So I've got 2x squared and then I have x plus three when I take out that, sorry, just two X and I'd have X plus three left over. Sorry. And then if I take out a negative one, I'm going to be left with X plus three. Once again, that's good, right? I want those two to be the same. Those two binomials are both X plus three. So now I have two X minus one is one of the factors and X plus three is my other factor. So what do I do from here? This problem seems like it's never going to end. Well, I'm going to set my two factors equal to zero. And I'm going to solve. So I get x equals add 1 divided by 2. I get 1 half. Over here, I'm going to subtract 3. So I get negative 3. So I got these two answers here. But hold up. Maybe I should pump the brakes on circling, shouldn't I? Because I got to check for extraneous solutions. So if I look at my original problem here, all the way back up in blue. Okay. If I plug in 1 half to all of these, I get a positive, I get positive, I get positive. We're good there. But if I plug in negative 3, to this one here, I get negative six. I'm done. I can't use that. doesn't matter what happens to the rest of them. If one of them is negative, donezo. It happens to be positive in one of them and negative in the other. doesn't matter. If it's negative in one, it does not work. But this one gives me positive in everything, so one half is my solution for this problem. All right, how about this one? Solve for x. Um, well, once again, I'm going to have to condense on that left-hand side. So I'm going to have log base eight of three x minus one over x plus 5, all that's in the logarithm, equals log base 8 of 4. Now I have my one-to-one -one property situation going on here. So I've got 3x minus 1 over x plus 5 equals 4. Now you might be like, well, bro, what do I do with this? I don't remember how to do this. All right, so either you can think of it as multiplying by x plus 5 on both sides to get that out of the denominator, or some folks like to set up a cross multiplication situation. So I'm going to have 3x minus 1 equals 4 times x plus plus five. So now I'm going to go ahead and distribute this four. I'll get three X minus one equals four X plus 20. Um, I would subtract 20 to get negative 21. I'd subtract three X to get X. So I get X equals negative 21. But does that work in my original? A negative number there? No way. Okay. Both of these would end up giving me negatives inside the log. That's not good. So erase that. Boom, no solution for this one. That can happen, all right? We did all the algebra correctly. We used all of our properties correctly. It just happened to be no solution. It can never happen. All right, last problem. Let's rock and roll with this thing. All right, so for this one, we've got uh, addition going on again. So I can condense this into log base four of, and it'll be x squared plus 12x, and that equals three. Okay, and that's all in my logarithm. 
Alrighty, hmm. Well, I can't use my one-to-one -one property, but perhaps I can remember that I could rewrite this now in exponential form, right? If I'm in log form, I don't know what to do. I can rewrite an exponential. So I've got four to the third equals x squared plus 12x. Now I can evaluate four to the third to be 64. Ooh, this problem is just dope. Okay, now I've got a quadratic, right? I gotta set it equal to zero. That is a zero, not a six. And I'm gonna get x squared plus 12x minus 64. That's gonna give me zero equals, and I'll have, how about x plus 16, x minus four. 16 and negative four add, or sorry, multiply to negative 64 and add to 12, so that all checks out. I'm gonna jump right to my answers, negative 16, positive four. Do they work in the original? Well, my original, I definitely can't have an x value that's a negative, right? Because I have log base four of x, so that's gone. But the four is going to work in the original one. So one of those solutions work, one of them is, is extraneous, and that's that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was a lot, that was power packed. Three problems, it was awesome.